Hello, everyone. In our presentation today, we will talk about targeting molecular and cellular signaling to inhibit carcinogenesis. Several significant progress has been made in targeting some molecular and cellular pathways to help prevent or treat different cancers, some of them by using chemopreventive agent. So what is chemopreventive agent? Chemopreventive agent is a substance that is capable of preventing, inhibiting, or reversing the development of cancer. Chemopreventive agents have been developed based on preclinical and clinical data showing that specific compounds modulate key molecular and cellular mechanisms that promote tumorigenesis. Tamoxifen is a cancer hormone therapy or anti-estrogens that functional in treating neoplastic diseases. Estrogen synthesis starts with cholesterol which is dehydroxylated to pregnenolone in the adrenal gland. Then, pregnenolone is converted into androstenidione. The later is converted to estradiol, the most potent estrogen by the action of the enzyme aromatase which is found in the ovaries and adipose tissue. Many types of breast cancers are dependent on a constant supply of estrogen for their growth. A family of drugs called the selective estrogen receptor modulators, such as tamoxifen, antagonizes estrogen at its binding sites and breast, therefore inhibiting the growth of the tumor cells. Another chemopreventive agent derived from natural products is sulforaphane. It acts as a chemopreventive role in breast, colon, and prostate cancer. It is a classic example of a natural product that can target multiple molecular cellular pathways that modulate cancer. For example, sulforaphane can help detoxify chemical carcinogens by inducing glutathione S transferases and inhibiting expression of CYPs. Sulforaphane also alters expression of xenobiotic metabolizing enzymes and epigenetically modified genes such as P21 and BCL2-associated X protein. So, what is the best source of sulforaphane? It is an isothiocyanate found in cruciferous vegetables. So how sulforaphane targets molecular and cellular signaling to inhibit carcinogenesis? Here are the potential cellular mechanisms pertinent to chemoprevention in prostate cancer. It is to be noted that all these mechanisms have some degree of interaction to synergistically afford chemoprevention. Firstly, glucorophanin in the broccoli is converted to sulforaphane, SFN, by the myrosinase enzyme, by chewing, freezing, or gut bacteria. Then, sulforaphane enters the cell and binds to keep one, freeing NRF2. This results in phosphorylation, P, of NRF2, allowing it to enter the cell nucleus. NRF2, along with a small MAF, SMAF, protein binds with the antioxidant response element, AR, to influence gene expression. This will increase enzyme, increase antioxidant defense enzymes, and decrease inflammation. HER2 is a membrane-bound receptor with intracellular tyrosine kinase activity that is often overexpressed in cancer patients, particularly in breast cancer. HER2 plays an important role in the signaling network that drives cell proliferation via multiple signal transduction pathways. The HR family is made up of four main members, which are HER1, HER2, HER3, and HER4. HER2 receptor sits within the surface of certain cells. HER2 receptor will bind with other HER family, or HER2 itself, to form homo- or heterodimerization. The human epidermal growth factor 2 gene, often known as HER2, is in charge of producing the HER2 protein found on the cell membranes. The HER2 gene has two copies, and together they produce precisely the proper amount of HER2 receptors for normal cell activity. When the receptors pair up, they will generate a signal that can tell a cell to proliferate by initiating intracellular cell signaling. However, in cancer cells, they sometimes have extra copies of the HER2 gene known as HER2 gene amplification. These extra genes can direct the cell to make too many HER2 receptors, called HER2 overexpression. This changes to HER2 receptors can cause so much cell signaling, which result in the tumor cell being constantly triggered to divide. This uncontrolled cell division can cause tumor growth. However, there are drugs that target HER2 receptors can stop cancer cells from dividing. One of it is trastuzumab, which is the generic name for Herceptin. Herceptin is a monoclonal antibody drug that targets the HER2 receptor. Herceptin attaches itself to the HER2 receptors on the surface of cancer cells. Herceptin interferes with the HER2 receptor's ability to dimerize with other HER receptors by targeting its juxtamembrane domain. By separating HER2 from the other receptor, this interaction prevents the production of homo- or heterodimers. This, then, will cause HER2 receptors to block the intracellular signaling pathways as well. This will also prevent further growth and proliferation of cancer cells. Now let's move on to the transcription factors. Peroxisome proliferator-activated receptors, PPRs, are the nuclear hormone receptor. The PPR consists of three isotypes, which are PPR alpha, PPR beta or delta, and also PPR gamma. But in today's discussion, we are going to focus more on PPR gamma. PPR presence in the cell nuclei and they are the members of transcription factor. It plays an important role in regulating cancer cell proliferation, survival, apoptosis, and tumor growth. The transcription factor, PPR gamma can regulate drug metabolizing enzymes and many other cell signaling pathways. How does the mechanisms of PPR gamma? PPR is activated by naturally ligands, such as synthetic ligands. Once the ligand comes in and attached to the PPR gamma, it switches on the PPAR to become activated, PPAR gamma together with its transcriptional factor, which is retinoid X receptors RXR performing a heterodimer formation that then triggering multiple pathways. PPAR gamma can induce the expression of genes and suppress the secretion of inflammatory factors, which may reprogram the immune microenvironment of cancer to be less inflamed. Besides that, this activation can promote terminal differentiation, inhibit cell proliferation and angiogenesis, decrease migration and invasion, metastasis, and inflammation. As cancer prevention and therapies continue to evolve, 
Targeting more than one cellular or molecular target may provide even more powerful approaches to increase the efficacy of treatment for cancer patients. In the cases of myeloid leukemia, CML, tyrosine kinase inhibitors, TKIs, have been used to treat CML, but a complete molecular response is not typically observed. However, treatment with TKI together, combining with PPRG ligand pioglitazone, has shown to increase the efficacy of treatment for CML and potentially prevent recurrence of this disease. Moving on, modulation of the immune system has also been targeted to inhibit different cancers. Studies have also shown evidence that promoting immune cell activities can have profound effects on specific cancers. Immune checkpoint signaling focuses on immune checkpoint inhibitor therapy, which is one of the approaches done to treat cancer by modulating a patient's own immune system. Immune checkpoint proteins are inhibitory receptors that restrain T-cell functions in order to maintain immune homeostasis. They are expressed on the surface of immune-related lymphocytes. Examples of immune checkpoint proteins include PD-1 and its ligand PD-L1. They engage when T-cells recognize and bind to partner proteins. Immune checkpoint inhibitors, on the other hand, are antibody drugs that prevent cancer cells from restraining the activity of T-cells by forming a barrier between the immune checkpoints. In TME, tumor microenvironment, infiltrated activated T-cells recognize cancer cells through the interaction between the T-cell receptor and major histocompatibility complex. T-cells then release cytokines to destroy the cancer cells. Immune checkpoint PD-1, as mentioned earlier, functions to control immune tolerance. PD-L1, on the other hand, are normally found on certain healthy cells where it acts as a break to stop T-cells from attacking our healthy cells. However, in TME, cancer cells take advantage of this by producing PD-L1 when T-cell release interferon gamma. PD-L1, ligands of PD-1, interfere with antibody cancer immune response by binding to its receptor. When PD-1 and PD-L1 are bound, the cytotoxic activity of T-cell is deactivated. Immune checkpoint inhibitors, which are the antibody drugs mentioned, forms a barrier between PD-1 and PD-L1. In other words, inhibiting the deactivation of T-cells. This allows T-cells to find and attack the cancer cells. T-cells receive many different signals from cancer cells. Therefore, various types of checkpoint inhibitors can be developed depending on the type of cancer, as well as the stage of cancer. In conclusion, targeting molecular and cellular signaling pathways is a promising approach to inhibit carcinogenesis. Small molecule targeted anti-cancer drugs and natural compounds are two examples of this approach. However, more research is needed to overcome the challenges faced by these drugs and compounds. With that, we would like to thank you for your time and attention.